This is a video for how to go about creating the rear subassembly for the T9 Automoblox car. By now, you should have downloaded all of the T9 Automoblox parts from the PLTW Courses website for IED and then place them into your project folder. If you don't know how to find your project folder after you make one, you can always go into Windows Explorer and underneath Desktop, you can just go down to Documents and then find the Inventor folder. And you'll notice that I have all of my parts saved um, kind of into this area. So what you have to do is you need to make for yourself a folder that says Automoblox parts, place them in there, and then you can actually find that folder after you've created all of those parts. So what you need to do once you've downloaded them is go to Inventor and go to Projects, and you're going to go to New, and you're going to create a single user project, and you're going to highlight project name, and you can call that Automoblox car. And you can really call it whatever you want, but you can definitely call it PLTW Automoblox. You can call it car, whatever you wish. After doing that, you can see that C drive and where everything is located. You know, I currently have mine sitting on my desktop of my computer. You might have noticed when I went to my C drive um, for you know the curriculum part of it it might not have been there but I just placed mine on my desktop so you can see where it goes users my name desktop and that's where all of my parts are so once you've put all of your parts into that folder and you have them in a correct central location you can then go to new and go to English and you're gonna go to standard IAM inventor assembly and say create and we're doing the rear subassembly of the Automoblox car. So I'm going to go to place, and you'll see that I have this thing right here that says T9 bed. That is going to be the foundation of the rear subassembly, and we're going to go to open. And I'm going to left click to place, right click, and say OK. Now you'll notice that they're going to call this the front part of the object. It is the most descriptive. But what I'm going to have you do is flip up, and we're going to right click on this and go, to, go down to set current view as, and we're going to call this the front view. We're going to go to the top right-hand corner of the word front, and we're going to right-click and go down to Set Current View as Home, and go to Fit to View. Now when I click on my House button, this is the isometric view we're looking at. So in order for us to do the rear subassembly, we're going to have to put in axles and wheels and tires. So we're going to go to Place, and we're just going to put these on um, one at a time. So I'm going to go to Axle, and you're going to go to Open. And when I come out here, I'm going to left-click and left-click right click and say okay I want two axles. You might notice that as you come up here there's something known as T9 axle and this looks a little bit different. Um, you can choose either one. I've made this axle before and these actually look like the older Automoblox cars. This T9 axle is the newer Automoblox cars. The same principles hold the same when putting this together. So I'm just going to choose to use these axles myself and put those together. Now you'll notice that one thing we want is you want the parts with the cut in them facing away from the car. So down here in the bottom right with this one, you're going to notice this one's actually facing the car. I want it to go 180 degrees to the opposite side. I'm going to tap on that axle and go up to free rotate and I'm going to rotate this around until it's going the opposite direction. I want th these little cuts away from the car. So, there's different ways to go about assembling these objects. So what we want to do is go to Constrain. Now we could do axis to axis and face to face. We could do that. But I want to teach you the Insert Constraint. The Insert Constraint kind of allows you to kill two birds with one stone as you go through and do this. So I'm going to go to Insert and we're going to find this corner right here. When you see this circle, click, and you have an arrow pointing this way. I'm going to come up to the, I'm going to need to move my this out of the way, click on my, um, click on this corner and come around to the opposite side. And I'm going to click on this circle right here. And automatically when I say apply, it's constrained. I could have done axis to axis, face to face, but that is multiple constraints. In this case, we're just going to choose to use the insert constraint. The next one, this circle on the inside, that circle right there has an arrow pointing towards the car. I come down here and I'm going to have a circle arrow pointing away. I click and it automatically constrains it. And we're going to say OK. Now one thing you'll notice is that when I click and hold down on the axle, it's spinning, but the whole thing's moving. And I don't really like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our, um, our, our truck bed and go down to the word grounded. And now when I spin this around, you can see that it's spinning. But the truck bed's not moving. Now I can tell a little bit as I'm going in here that this goes into the part a little bit. We really don't want that to happen. Um, we can go back and fix that another time, but the main point is that you understand how to constrain these into place. The next part that will go on will be the rims. So I'm gonna go to place and you're gonna see T9 wheel and I'm gonna go to open. And I'm gonna left click and left click. I'm gonna right click and say okay. 
you'll notice that yours probably don't have the work plane down through the middle. In order to just go into any part while you're in an assembly, you can just double click on the part and you'll notice that everything else looks like it's made out of water. Now I've gone in and placed this work plane down through the middle. I'm going to go ahead and just delete that and I'll show you how to go about doing that right now. We're going to go to plane and you're going to go to mid plane between two planes. And all we have to do is we're going to click on the inside and I'm going to flip around to the other side so I can see it and I'm going to zoom in and click on that opposite side. You're going to notice that when I go to the word front it is now split in half right down the middle. This will matter when we put the tires on. We're going to go to return. Now you'll notice down here at the bottom right, I want the back end of the tie of the wheel facing the, the uh, truck bed. So we're going to tap on this part, go to free rotate. I'm going to rotate it around this way. I'm going to right click and say OK. We're going to go to constrain. And what we want to do is we're going to use the insert constraint again. And what I want to do is I want to constrain this circle and spin it around. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to have to use the other corner here of my cube to take a look at it. Always use those corners of your view cube. And I want to come right back to here and say apply. Now when I get out of this, this will spin around like that. One of the best parts of having good two-dimensional views is, look, I can actually see it constrained. It's constrained now. Let's go to our house button. We're going to go to constrain again. You're going to go to the insert button. And in this corner right here, I want this right here is going to touch this right here say apply and hit your X. Now you're going to notice that here we are. It spins around it. It came back and hit that other part of our axle and we're good to go with that. So let's hit the save button real quick. I want you hit the save button and you can call this, uh, you know, truck bed. I'm going to call this rear sub assembly and say save and say okay and it's going to ask you to save this assembly and all its dependents. You can't put something together without parts so you can't assemble something without actually having parts so you need to say okay from here. Now we're going to go to place and let's go ahead and place that tire. I'm going to find T9 tire and say open. And I'm going to left click two of them. I'm going to right click and say okay. Now again in a previous one I've done I, I had these work planes made. I'll go in and delete this one. So let's, do, let's do this together. Double click on the tire I will go in and right click and delete that work plane because I want to create a work plane with you. We're going to again going to go to plane, mid plane between two planes, and I'm going to zoom in on the surface on the outside. Let's do a surface on the outside. So I'm going to click on that surface on the outside. I'm going to go to the opposite side and I'm going to zoom in and click on this surface. You now have a mid plane between two planes that goes right down the center. You can see it. Now the cool thing about that is if we went back and changed this to a really, really wide tire or let's say a skinnier tire, it's going to maintain that mid plane. It's not going to, it'll move based upon whatever you put the dimensions in as. It's pretty cool. So we're going to go to return and I'm going to go to my house button and we're going to go to constrain. One of that, what I want to do first is we are going to constrain axis to axis. So in this case, we're not using the insert constraint. We're going to use the mate constraint, and we want to mate axis to axis. When I click on what I'll call the inside drum of the tire, you can see the center line show up when you see that center line click. Exact same thing with the wheel. Outside drum, click. And I'm going to say OK, and you're going to watch how this comes out now. And it is along that axis. It has two degrees of freedom. It can go along and around the X axis. If you can see the X down here. It can go along and around the X. We're going to go to constraint again. And we're going to go plane to plane. And you're going to say apply. We're going to do the same thing over here on the opposite side. Axis to axis. Apply. Plane to plane. Apply and say done. Now you're going to notice something that's kind of obvious. Um, this should not be rotating around this like this and this should not be rotating like that. These should be moving together when they spin. So we're going to fix that here in a second. One thing we want to do first though is we're going to right click on our work planes over here on our browser bar and just go down to visibility. I'm going to right click on each of these and just go to visibility and they should go away. Now you see where it says wheel one and wheel two. You have two wheels and two tires. Using your browser bar, right click on those work planes and take away their visibility. When you go through and do that, the work planes are still there. They're just turned on and off like light switches. So let's start with this. What we want to do is we want to find in our origin folder for one of our wheels, we're going to hit the little arrow next to origin, we want to find a plane that rests just like this. So I'm going to choose the XZ plane. We're going to right click and go to visibility. And there it is. You'll notice it showed up on both of them. We want to do the same thing for one of our tires. Hit the arrow next to origin 
and right click on that plane and go to visibility. And you'll notice now that over here on my car, I now have these planes going through. We didn't create them, they already exist within the origin folders. We're going to go to constraint and you're going to go to an angle constraint. And we're going to choose right here in the middle for undirected angle. And we're going to click on both these planes, this plane and this plane. And we're going to say apply. This plane and this plane. And you're going to notice they're at the same degree. What's kind of cool about this is that look, I can go 45 and watch them kind of, they should rotate together when I make them an undirected angle. We don't have to worry about that though. We're just going to stay at zero and I'm going to say apply. Now what should happen is when I click and hold down on the tire, the rim goes with it at the same angle. What's kind of neat about two-dimensional uh, two views is I can obviously see this move together now. So the car actually moves together. It's a great lesson in understanding how to go about um, placing angular constraints on things and how things have to be designed to move together. So once again, we're going to come up here to our origin folder and we're going to right click on our planes and take away their visibility. Now I did that for the tire. I'm going to have to do that for a wheel as well. Origin folder, right click, take away the visibility and take that back. Let's hit the save button real quick. Let's say OK. Now what we need to do is we need to place on um, one of the sockets that fits inside of here. Now this can be one of the most tricky, tricky things to put in. You're going to find your one block socket and you're going to say open. And we're going to left click to place, right click and say OK. Now we're going to tap on the object and go up to free rotate. And let's rotate this thing around to where it's you know facing outward. So I want my block, the cavity, if you will, of this, the thing that has a cut in it coming out this direction. We're going to right click and say OK. Now I've seen people before take hours trying to place, you know, face to face and it just barely doesn't fit and that can be really difficult. So I'm going to teach you a new way to go about constraining things and that's constraining things um, based upon corners. So you want to zoom in on the object and we're going to click on this corner right here, just that outside edge corner. And I'm going to zoom in and click on this corner right here. And I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And what you'll notice, it slides right along that. It can go around, along and around an axis, and go along and around the x-axis. What I want this to, what I want to happen with this is I want to constrain this in such a way. Where did my, where did my constraint go? I, oh, I moved it. I'm going to go to undo real quick up here. Now it should still slide along. Good, it slides along. My next thing that I want is to bring this kind of down a little bit. So if I go over to my side view, I want this to kind of come down into the object like that. Going to two-dimensional views sometimes can make things a lot easier on you. Let's go to Constraint, and we're going to choose this outside corner, and we're going to choose on this corner right here, and say Apply. And you'll notice now it doesn't move. Go to your front view. There's no gaps. There's no gaps over here on the side. There's no light. There's no breathing room. This is exactly what this is supposed to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and say Save again and say OK. And that right there is your, re your um, you know, kind of rear subassembly for the truck bed of the Automoblox car. Um, you can go in and edit your axles if you don't want it to come in. Again, there's those T9 axles that they created. Maybe you could choose to use these. They look a little bit different than the ones that I used. Um, you can feel free to use those for these cars. I just elected not to, but all the constraining is the same for those parts. So this has been a video for how to create the rear subassembly for the T9 Automoblox car.